in the context of what's going on in the industry. Mm -hmm. The industry has found itself, you know, once upon a time, I don't know, seven or eight years ago, price for natural gas was, was double digits. It was yeah, like 14 15 bucks. bucks yeah, and like now that. it's like two bucks. It was under $2 earlier this a few year. Weeks ago, yeah. How can the industry exist with such cheap prices? Well, in the end, the industry is kind of a victim of its own success. I mean, it was the industry that went out and unlocked all this uh, shale gas and, and thereby, you know, brought on a huge supply. And at the same time, we've had a recession. Uh, we just had a very mild winter. So inventories are straining at, at, at the seams. So, um, the way the industry has, or some in the industry have tried to get around this is, is they've scaled back their drilling. Uh, they've also focused more, uh, what drilling they're doing, they're focusing on oil because it's worth a lot more. So that's, that's kind of how the industry is dealing with it. Although not all players are dealing it, with it as well as, right. as others. Right, Chesapeake, we'll get to that in a second. Yeah. That's its own problem. If I'm an investor, what should I be thinking about in terms of the natural gas market outside of um, Chesapeake, which is a big natural mm. gas play. You have Encana, which is a Canadian natural yep. gas play. But again, very leveraged to gas. Very leveraged to gas. And then you have like the majors, like an Exxon, which mm. bought XTO a few years ago. Mm -hmm. Again, they're leveraged to gas. But mm. but in general, the majors are much, you know, kind of less exposed to the natural yeah, gas market. Yeah, they are. They're less exposed to U.S. natural gas, at least. I mean, the good thing about those guys is that they produce a lot of gas outside the U.S. where the price is linked to oil. So. For example, gas in Europe costs about double what we pay here. Uh, in Asia, they pay three or four times what we pay here. I see. So, um, so gas is cheap in the U.S. It is very cheap because it's a land, it's a locked market. If it you gets can't get more, it out. If it gets cheaper, mm -hmm. let's say it goes back under two dollars. At what point do the producers just start capping the wells or doing whatever you're supposed to do with that? Well, I gas? think that the time to watch for is is kind of towards the end of the summer and into fall because that's when inventories typically peak. And if you've got gas. Uh, if you've got too much gas in inventory, people will simply have to curtail their production because there won't be any capacity for it in the system. A dollar eighty is one estimate that I've seen from Citigroup uh, as being a level where producers will simply throw their hands up and stop producing. But it depends where they're producing. The other thing to watch out for with gas is a lot of gas is produced alongside oil. It gets produced it's like a byproduct, right? And as these guys, you know, focus more on on oil. It means that even though they're taking drilling away from gas-only prospects, they're still going to be producing some gas as they try to boost their, okay. their oil output. Let's turn to Aubrey McClendon and the travails yeah. of Chesapeake relatively quickly. Yeah. You have a piece coming out on yeah. um, Chesapeake. Yeah. Chesapeake stock's getting hammered today. It's down 14, 15 percent, something on that. 13 percent, yeah. Yeah. And that's largely because it is a huge leverage play on the natural gas market, isn't it? Absolutely. I mean, I think people over the past couple of weeks have been very focused on Aubrey McClendon's uh, finances and that sort of thing, which is, you know, obviously pro provides a lot of drama. But for me, the real story is really Chesapeake's balance sheet. Um, you know, that company has a lot of net debt that people can see on the balance sheet, but it also has a lot of off balance sheet obligations. And I've been calculating that this morning. Um, so net debt is probably is roughly in the kind of 12 billion figure. But if you throw in all sorts of off balance sheet obligations, it gets north of 20 billion. I and mean, this company is really I think will at some point start to struggle because it's having to sell a lot of assets in order to fund the Is huge spending so that it's making. Is it so there's a risk of just crashing and burning if, if, if you have really, really low natural gas prices? Well, you know, I mean, with any company that has high leverage, there's always a risk. I mean, leverage just is a risky, uh, a risky strategy to take. Um, I think the issue for, for Chesapeake is that essentially it is, the model is, is built for a bull market in gas and, and the hope that they will get that bull market. I mean, for example, they took off their hedges late last year, expecting the price to go back up this year. Uh, and if, if that doesn't come through, then they're gonna have to really rethink that model because if you're trying to sell assets to cover very weak cash flow, that's fine as long as you can sell those assets. But the more you try to sell, the more buyers know that you're a forced seller. And you've got to wonder what kind of prices you're going to get. Liam Denning, natural gas guru here at the Wall Street Journal. Fascinating Thank stuff. You.